Let's look at the facts and see if we can bust some myths. Speeding tickets can get very expensive. Just how far over the speed limit you were driving, along with your weekly income, is usually what's used to determine how much your fine will be. The greater the speed, the greater the percentage of your weekly income that you'll be fined, as well as racking up a greater amount of penalty points onto your license. In the UK, speeding fines are capped at £2,500 on motorways and £1,000 on other roads. Speeding fines are based on a percentage of your weekly income, meaning that two people can be fined two different amounts for the same speeding offence. Some of the worst speeding offences can cost up to 700% of your weekly income without actually exceeding those caps. You won't know for certain if a mobile speed camera caught you until the registered keeper of the vehicle receives a notice of intended prosecution letter. This is part of the process for being issued with a speeding ticket. If you're pulled over by a police officer for speeding, then they can give you the NIP or notice of intended prosecution verbally. But if you're caught by a camera, then whoever's the registered vehicle owner is gonna get it through the post. Once you've filled out and returned the form that comes with the NIP, then the police will have six months to issue you with the actual fine or fixed penalty notice. When it comes to the specific way in which mobile speed camera vans should operate, there are only a few, well, guidelines rather than hard and fast rules that they have to stick to. For instance, many people wrongly believe that camera vans have to be clearly visible to drivers. However, there are no UK laws that state that a camera van must be visible to motorists. On the whole, speed camera van operators don't usually make themselves hidden because their presence is known to deter speeding and help to make the roads safer. So you'll usually see a speed camera off in the distance. The choice of where to place the van is usually dictated by where incidents have occurred due to people breaking the speed limit. If they end up hidden, it's likely by chance, just due to the surroundings, rather than an intentional sneaky tactic. Another misconception is that a van can only monitor and enforce speeds on the same side of the road that they're parked on. In reality, it doesn't matter exactly where a van is parked, it can identify motorists speeding on either side of the road. And with some of the laser systems they use these days, they can actually read speeds from a mile away. There's also a misconception that the police need a clear photo of your face whilst driving in order to be able to prosecute. However, it's the registered vehicle owner's duty to tell the police who was the driver, so the police don't need to get a photo of you in the driving seat. The vehicle owner should identify who was driving using that form that came with their NIP. The form must be completed and returned within 28 days or it's considered a criminal offence, as is lying about who was driving. Many parents, for instance, have tried to take the fine and the points on behalf of their children to avoid the younger driver's insurance from shooting up. In a similar way, couples have often tried to take each other's points when one of them is near to a driving ban. However, it's easy to come a cropper doing this. If a camera did snap a photo of your face, then the correct driver could be quite easily identifiable. Most of the time, a tolerance for speeding is applied, this usually being the often quoted 10% plus two miles an hour over the speed limit, 35 in a 30, 46 in a 40, and so on. Sometimes a speed camera may flash you for speeding, but allows this tolerance. In most instances, that is, it's not a guarantee. Again, Guidelines and common practice are in no way the same as an actual law. For instance, when a police officer uses a mobile speed camera, they can enforce different levels of the rules. Additionally, and this point is potentially very important, if you were grossly over the speed limit, then you could be charged with dangerous driving. This is far more serious than a regular speeding ticket. The usual procedure goes out the window and the potential punishment could be a driving ban or even time behind bars. Usually, though not exclusively, traveling double the limit, 60 and a 30, 80 and a 40 and so on, or exceeding 100 miles an hour anywhere, is considered to be the point at which speeding is considered dangerous driving. My advice if you're faced with a dangerous driving charge is to seek legal advice, straight away. If you don't accept the fine and penalty points, you can challenge the speeding ticket in court. However, it can be difficult to win these cases because you only need to be proven to have exceeded the speed limit briefly. You can win a speeding ticket challenge if you weren't the driver, if your car had been stolen, or if your vehicle was mistakenly identified as having speeded. In these circumstances, you may find that a speed camera photo showing that you weren't the driver 
could be a very helpful thing indeed. But be warned, an unsuccessful speed and fine challenge is likely to result in an even bigger fine. If you think you're wanting to challenge a ticket or you're worried that a fine is about to land you in trouble, then a popular option is to consult a solicitor who can help. There's many online solicitors that work out cheaper and easier than meeting in person. Just Answer, for example, only costs £5 for a trial. One of my colleagues managed to save over £270 on a parking ticket by using their service. I've linked that offer in the description, and if you use that, you'll also be supporting Money Nerd. So thank you.